Hi, my name is Sarah Becker Vine. I'm the founder of the Earth Angels Sanctuary and in Spirit Coaching.co.uk, and I am absolutely delighted to bring everyone uh, Joe Clarkson today and share a little bit about him and his journey and his gifts that he brings to the world. What a magnificent Earth Angel he is. Joe counts Randaz and an angel called Emmanuel as two of his closest friends and teachers and we thought it'd be really nice to share a little bit about Joe. Um, I've worked with Joe a little bit now for a while and had some amazing messages from the angel Emmanuel and I really wanted to be able to share with everybody who's connected with me and all those earth angels out there. If any of you are familiar with Katie Speed and Shimlea who's in the earth angel sanctuary we've done a couple of live hangouts and um, shared it with everyone. It's very similar like that in the fact that Joe actually channels this angel called Emmanuel. So he's going to share a little bit about his story and see if Emmanuel actually has any message he'd like to share with everybody watching today. So welcome, Joe. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's awesome to have you here and to, to be able to share you with uh, with my community. Um, so could you first tell us a little bit, because, I mean, having Ram Daz and an angel as, as two of your cl sort of close friends and teachers is pretty cool. So could you tell us a little bit about your journey and how will this come about? Sure. Um, yeah, it is a little bit odd when you kind of uh, say to people, you know, uh, uh, my friends are. <laughs> it's a little bit different. Um, well, I guess I'm very fortunate. Uh, I chose very well. I chose a wonderful parent uh, in my mum. And when I was about 16, 17, um, I first was introduced to Ramdas and um, and I went on retreats when I was 17 and had what I call my sort of road to Damascus experience where I kind of realized that I was a spiritual soul on a on a human journey. And it's quite that, young, 17, to be going on retreats. Sure, yeah. And you, you know, get you to get to, on with your mission. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you have to bear in mind that at that time, you know, I was a, a sort of grumpy teenage goth, you know, so, you know, uh, I was wearing leather jackets and, you know, all the whole look and the piercings and such, which you can see I haven't lost. Um, and so I kind of stood out a bit. Yeah, if I'm honest, there wasn't there wasn't anyone else that was my kind of age on these kind of retreats. Um, but what was beautiful was that uh, Ramdas saw something in me um, and despite all the stuff that I was going through at the time, which, you know, was pretty hardcore stuff, uh, pretty much grounded in, in the sort of the realities of being human, if you like, uh, and all the sort of traps and desires that go with that. And when I first spent time with Ram Dass, um, there was me looking at him thinking that there would be judgment or you know who the hell are you type stuff and when i looked into his eyes and felt his presence all i felt was just the pouring of unconditional love a love and i knew that he knew everything about me all my bad bits and good bits but mainly my bad bits that was the bits i was scared about and he loved me totally and unconditionally and that's a major deal when you're 17 and you're a grumpy goth um and it transformed my life, not just the love, but that at that moment uh, we shared a moment, uh, which was that, you know, we transformed into these two flames and there were two souls that were just hanging out. And that sort of started me on a path. Uh, was that a direct path to now? No, absolutely not. I was absolutely determined to uh, fall off the path on a regular basis and took great delight in enjoying all the pleasures and uh, being a human. of being a human. Yes, absolutely. Um, and at the same time, I was very fortunate that around the same time, I met a wonderful being called Emmanuel. And when I was about 17, so I sort of jokingly now talked to Ram Dass about the fact that the two of them kind of tag teamed me from an early age, uh, from 17. Um, so I went on a, a weekend uh, Emmanuel was then channeled by a wonderful lady called Pat Rodegast and together they've written uh, three um, wonderful, wonderful books called Emmanuel's Books, which are still available on Amazon if you want to go and find them. They're great reads, uh, absolutely relevant today. And um, Pat 
was this lovely lady from little old lady from uh, Miami, originally from Connecticut, New York, um, and from America, therefore. And what I loved was that Emmanuel was, for me, I mean, again, the most amazing of experiences. He introduced us to our guardian angels. And from that moment on, I knew absolutely the angels existed. Um, it was irrefutable as far as I was concerned. I'd experienced them, I'd held them, um, they'd held me. Um, and then over the course of the next, well, until 2008, you know, I would see Emmanuel and Pat, they would come over each year and we'd go on retreat with them. Um, and Emmanuel really, what was wonderful about Emmanuel was you could ask him your personal questions. Emmanuel was for me in my darkest hours, um, he gave me comfort and he told me that I wasn't alone, even in my dark times. And that was tremendously freeing um, and tremendously, it just felt great to know that, that he was always there. And it was interesting because me and mum were always, um, we were part of, we became part of the Emmanuel family because we'd go kind of every year. And um, Pat adopted me as sort of her adopted grandson. Um, and during the course of the years, you know, Emmanuel went from being this sort of very high being teacher to sort of like your, your favorite uncle, the old wise uncle, you know, when in the way in which he, he would talk to me. And then he was like my elder brother in the way in which he would talk to me. It's like, yeah, come on, you know this stuff. And then he was just like my friend um, in the last few years when he was being channeled by Pat. And he always helped me to step up into the fullness of who I am. And there is no doubt that without Ramdas and Emmanuel in my life, I wouldn't be where I am. Um, and I know that I chose them to do that and that they agreed to do that for me before we were born. you through all the parts of growing up and experiencing all the things that we can experience as being a human and, and all that, because it must have been, can be challenging times being a young adult and, and growing up and fitting into the world and having having these two significant people in, in your life to, to help you and to keep going back as well, because there's a part of you that's that felt that connection to to keep being connected to them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it was, um, <laughs> you sort of, you would go to these retreats and think, oh, do you know what? I'm all right. I'm good this time, you know. And then you'd go to the retreat and then within about half an hour, it's like, you know, Emmanuel would come in, you'd feel his presence come in the room and I'd just be blubbing, you know, because I'd suddenly realized that there was this bindweed around my heart and, you know, he'd just gently take that off and go, you don't need that, you know, because we beat ourselves up so much for being human. And I think that the wonder of and the beauty of both those teachers is that they are they are permission givers. Yes. And it's so important that we realize that it's quite OK to be human. And that's part of what being it is. It's, we're not designed. And we're this life is not perfect. A, exactly. We're here to experience and to learn from our mistakes and to grow and. Yeah. And to bring the two elements together. And mm. Emmanuel's very clear about that. And Ramdas would use different terminology because he would talk about being a soul. But it's not about being the perfect enlightened being. It's about how can we bring that, the elements of our angel self more to the fore so that it shines out through us more and more. Yeah. And still embrace our humanness. It's because be as long as we deny it, as long as if we deny our humanness, then we're, design, we're denying a major part of what we are. I, think, I think that's the thing with a lot of earth angels, though, Joe, the... They they know they they have the gifts they're here for a reason with angels and uh, but because of their past and because of things that maybe they've been through or maybe they will shout at their children or they'll get stressed out they feel this is like deep unworthiness because they're not being angelic but we're <laughs> we're not here to be perfect we're we're here to be us we can still be full of love and because we're we're always learning and growing and I think that's a that's a big thing that holds a lot of people back they feel that they're not being angelic enough well i think for me you know i've heard so many times from emmanuel you know there are no ledgers kept in heaven so all of you listening there are no ledgers kept in heaven there's no books of the good girls and the bad boys there's no such books you know they don't exist the only thing that your angels ever do 
is celebrate your progress. They understand how difficult it is to be human and still remember your divinity. Yeah. And so they support you every step of the way. Look, I've been as far dark and down as you can be, right? And I've had experiences in my life that are as far dark and down as you can be. And here I am channeling an angel. Yeah. There's no judgment there. There's only love. And that is for me the fundamental messages of both Ramdas's teachings and also that of Emmanuel is that it's just all about the love and how one can step into that love and that love is first and foremost for you as yourself. Absolutely, I think it's embracing it ourselves and it's just having that pure acceptance. I am who I am. This is who I am. I'm not perfect, flaws, made mistakes, but I'm still me. I'm still good enough and I'm still loved. Yes. And the most important person that has to love you is you. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that can be tough. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily an easy thing, right? Especially if, you isn't it? Yeah, especially if you've spectacularly fallen out of your love with yourself. And as Emmanuel says, you know, the, the biggest disease on the planet right now is the fact that we do not love ourselves. And if we just learn to love ourselves. You imagine, you imagine that if everyone was just in love with themselves and they they knew how worthy they were, how valuable, how loved they were, and they could feel that. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Well, then you have heaven on earth, and that's what Absolutely. Emmanuel is about. And that's what we're certainly working towards. So you mentioned that obviously it was Pat who was this independent who channeled. How how did you come to channel Emmanuel? Because oh. you now have taken over that role and that was a bit obviously to accept that for you as well wasn't it oh yeah um <laughs> so um uh pat uh retired from uh channeling emmanuel she was diagnosed with early onset alzheimer's in i think 2008 and um she decided that that was her time and she was ready to you know just let let the emmanuel thing go um, and you know what? She did the most amazing service for this planet, for the angels, for everyone. And, um, and yes, and so she retired and, um, obviously her Alzheimer's took a greater and greater hold of her. Right. And, um, although where she really was, was just hanging out with the angels. Um, and I know that, and I have no doubt about that. Uh, and Emmanuel showed me on many times where she was and how much fun she was having <laughs> so i don't worry about her she had a great time on the way out yeah, uh, getting, getting tingles from <laughs> yeah, so. you know, pat was a, a a wonderful wonderfully flawed human beautiful being who loved white wine uh chicken parmigiano dean martin and um liked to have her her dates with her hot men um, and that was Pat, right? She was a human and she was wonderful. And I loved it a bit. And she partied all the way out. And um, she did tremendous service. So, um, yeah, in about 2010 or the end of 2009, um, I can't remember exactly, but I was doing an exercise with my mom, who's sort of my guide and human guide and teacher has been all my life. And um, we were doing an exercise where she'd been doing this exercise when she was coaching people called your forever friend. And she would ask them, who's your forever friend? And essentially your forever friend was like your guardian angel, you know, what guide you had. And she'd ask them for a name. So she'd been telling me about how successful this is, how wonderful it is. And yeah, you know, me and my mom have sort of a weekly uh, glass or two of wine and sort out the universe evening, as we call it. Um, where we, we indulge in a glass or two of wine and uh, have chats, big talk about yeah. you know, life, the universe and everything. And um, during one of these, I sort of said, OK, well, look, you know, you keep going on about this wonderful forever friend exercise, but you've never done it with me. And she's like, oh, OK, let's do it. So. Um, so she said, OK, Joe, who's your forever friend? And at that moment, instantaneously, I. I heard stroke experience because it was more an experience than a, a sound, if you like, uh, a voice. And that was, and it just said, well, it's me, of course. It's Emmanuel. Me and you have been friends forever. And 
to be quite frank, that freaked the hell out of me. Right? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, what the hell is this? Um, and then began a journey. Uh, my mum would, during those evenings, my mum would ask questions of Emmanuel. And at first, it was very hard to get me out of the way because, and get my unworthiness. So I, I suffered from what I call my I'm not worthy syndrome, right? And um, I, I didn't want this. I, I, I was, this was not in my life plan. You know, this was not what I was intending. Where you thought you was headed. <laughs> no, not at all, right? Um, this came completely out of the blue. Um, and it was a major thing, you know, Emmanuel was a, you know, Pat and Emmanuel toured all over the world. They had three best-selling books and then this, Emmanuel was choosing me, why me? Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that big, because you, especially as he's been with somebody else because I've not really heard of that before. Uh, and it was a big, it felt like a big yeah. burden, right? Like it was, I, I'm, I wasn't sure that I was ready, big enough to do, deal with that, right, or do that. Um, and with Emmanuel's wonderful guidance, although he didn't really guide me anyway, he just would be very patient with me. We'd just do this until it got clearer and clearer. I have my own practices that I do, which I, spiritual practices, which I do, which I think have helped me considerably. Um, and then in, I think 2010, I go every year to see Ramdas in Maui, where he lives now. And um, Ramdas and Pat and Emmanuel were very close friends. And so it, it, Ramdas actually found Pat and Emmanuel on a radio show, a, a call in radio show, uh, when he was touring in the I guess, late 70s, early 80s. Um, and he heard, happened to, he was coming back from a seminar and he happened to tune in to this radio station and he heard Pat and Emmanuel. And he was like, what is this? Whatever this is, this is truth. And so he called the radio station and asked if he could get in contact with Pat. And that was the beginning of a, a great friendship. And Ramdas used to call um, uh, Emmanuel his spooky friend and described him as like his favorite uncle, right? Who just didn't happen to have a body, right? <laughs> uh, and Emmanuel was a, uh, a teacher and friend of Ramdas, I think that's fair to say. And Ramdas wrote, a lot of the questions in some of the Emmanuel books are from Ramdas. He helped compile those. So I'm going to see Ramdas. And um, so at this time, Pat is still very much alive, but she has retired. And I said to Ramdas, I think I'm the channel for Emmanuel. Emmanuel has started talking to me. And he was like, oh, so you're the channel for Emmanuel now. So you're taking over from Pat. And of course, I bet my, that brought up everything. Oh, just saying. <laughs> it just come up, and I'm like, uh, um, uh, well, you know, um, uh, well, Pat's still alive, and I wouldn't possibly be, you know, um, uh. I anyway, went, hmm, that's interesting. And he goes, you know, that's ego too, right? And that's the unworthiness. It's just a form of ego, right? And then began a uh, uh, a yearly event where you know I'd check in with Ramdas and Ramdas would then begin to ask Emmanuel questions um, and you know Ramdas has been a tremendous help and a tremendous aid because he knows Emmanuel and for me the affirmation that he said to me you know this is Emmanuel and you are his channel and I have no doubt about that it didn't matter what anyone else said then. <laughs> no, Ramdas, absolutely. Ramdas. Okay, Ramdas, I believe you. Yeah, all right, and I think in a way that if you hadn't have had Pat in your life and had this experience, I, I don't think you would even have embraced the fact that you can talk to it, an angel. So yeah. everything happens for a reason for you to know Pat, love Pat, and to have this spiritual family. Yeah. To then, although it's brought up lots of stuff for you, to actually be able to take that on board and now be able to share him with so many in the world. Because you've done a, a live hangout with Ram Dass, that's correct, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was kind of mad. Um, so, yeah, last last August, 
uh, we did have a, a webinar together, which was kind of amazing. Um, so, so yeah, going back to 2011, uh, I was in Maui, and that's where me and my mom go every year, see Ram Das, and we that's our that's our retreat time, that's our downtime. We normally go for three or four weeks, and that's where we figure out the what next, and we talk to Emmanuel, and we talk to Ram Das, and um, we drink a lot of wine, and it's a lot of fun, right? Um, and let me know when you go next. I'll come join you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and yeah, uh, when we were when we were there that time, Emmanuel um, told me that it was time to come out of the closet, the spiritual closet, and say, "I am Joe," and I tell Emmanuel, "What of it?" <laughs> and um, so I told Ramdas that who thought it was hysterically funny that I was coming out of the closet. He said, I didn't know you were that way inclined. Um, and I said, it's the spiritual closet. And um, <laughs> and um, then I started, I came back to the UK and did precisely that. And we started to do some days um, with Emmanuel, uh, workshop days, I guess, and um, started to do some of those. Then I started to do some things where we did some little intimate evenings in my house where people could just come and ask Emmanuel questions. And that began the process, really. And since then, I've just been working on myself so that I can be as clear and as true a channel as I can for Emmanuel so that I can get completely out of the way. So now he comes through. And now he comes through. You experience Emmanuel. You don't just hear his words. And um, it's magic. And then, yes, 2013... Ram Dass. I asked Ram Dass, how do I, what do I do next? You know, what, what, what are the next stages? And he said, I think it's time we, we brought Emmanuel out to the world. Yes. And so he invited us to do a, a webinar with him last August in 2014. And um, that's, you know, a dream beyond a dream. Yeah. Sharing absolutely. a stage and with And now you're being Ram interviewed Dass. by me. <laughs> <laughs> what more is there? It's the pinnacle. I'm I excited to go and higher. share you with everyone. <laughs> From having, speaking to you, John, what a just a brilliant, lovely guy you are, and then obviously having having a chat with Emmanuel as well is pretty awesome. It's just to share it with people because it needs to be out there and to help people. For people to say, look, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, absolutely. And for me, it's a, a tremendous honour and privilege to be Emmanuel's channel I'm, I had access to a manual for, since I was 17, I'm now 40, still just, um, and so, you know, a manual's been in my life for 23 years, and what's wonderful now and what's different is you used to have to wait, once a year, Pat would come over, and in a weekend retreat, you might get to ask, you know, I was the annoying one that always had my hand up, you know, wanting to ask the questions, and I might get three questions in a weekend. The wonderful thing now is that with the advent of things like technology, Emmanuel's so much more accessible, you know, because now we can talk like this. That wasn't possible back then, right? So you can talk to people all over the world, and he has people that talk to him from all over the world. And you can get to ask your questions one-to-one, -one, you know, and you can get to ask all your questions, right, <laughs> until you run out, which is magic, you know. And that's fantastic, and to be able to share that. And I think that's really, for me, what is the essence of Manuel. Yes, he is here for a reason. He has purpose in what he's doing, just as Shimlea does. Um, and and you get to ask him your personal things and get some personal guidance, and that's magic. And personal love, you know? He just loves people up, and it's magic. And it's just such a wonderful thing to be able to share with people. Yeah. you are joe as well to step into this and to be able to to do this and to share a manual and to be embrace this and to be on this journey for so long because it's it's not easy for any of <laughs> us and we have got to clear all our own unworthiness and stuff that's in to keep stepping up and to keep sharing but ultimately you're fueled by love the same as myself and what Absolutely. we do and keep putting ourselves is because it is it's all, all about love and about sharing and about helping people and help them realize that they are yeah. so on that note could we have a chat with Emmanuel and, and if awesome. you, is there anything else that you'd like to share about yourself or 
I think just upon that point, okay, that you were just raising, and that is that, you know, Emmanuel is, he talks about the fact that we're multifaceted beings. And my, part of my life purpose is to show people that you can be more than just one thing, right? And so, you know, you know, this isn't my day job. It is my day job. But, you know, channeling Emmanuel is a part of who I am and it's a part of my purpose and it's a big part of my purpose. But I'm also, I run my own business as a business consultant. That's a part of my life because that's about changing the way people work. I'm a dad. I'm a lover. I'm a partner. I'm a, you know, I'm a kirtan singer. You know, I mentor young people. I coach people and I channel Emmanuel, you know, and we, it's really important that people start to realize that we're more than just one thing. Absolutely. We have potential yeah. to be so much more and we can be these multifaceted beings. Mm. And I'm sure that more and more Emmanuel will become a bigger part of my life. And he encourages me to be all of that, right? And we can be all of that. And what I'd say to just people is don't limit what is possible because anything is possible. And I'm living proof of that. If you'd have told me five years ago that I would be sharing a stage with my teacher, the guy who had helped me have that road to Damascus experience when I was just 17, I'd have said, get out of here, shut up, get off. And yet, there I was last yeah. year. I think and it's I just being, just to keep growing as we're guided to because who knows what the future holds for, for any of us. No. But I think when we come from our heart, we come from a place of love, it, it just unfolds. I would never have thought a couple of years ago, three years ago, I'd be interviewing people and putting it on YouTube and have all videos. It was when I was pregnant laying there with my little boy. Yeah. I heard something that says, people need to hear it from you. It's like, we have got to do this. Yeah. Fear. Oh, <laughs> stepping up. And who knows where we'll be in five years' time, what we'll be doing. But I know it'll be from a place of love. And that will grow into it and expand into that. And, and that's exciting. Yeah. And that's what we should see life as. Exciting. Yeah. And see it as an adventure. Yes. You know, it's like life is, it, life is not just all the better roses. But if we see it as an adventure, then we realize that sometimes there's muddy puddles. You know, sometimes there's steep mountains to climb. Right. But ultimately, it's all part of what the journey is. And it's all about having adventure. We are angels having an adventure as human beings. It's like holiday camp for angels, all right? You know, they get bored of the perfection and they go, I want to come in and have some imperfection and enjoy being that, right? And so enjoy being that. If you're having a funny old day, enjoy having a funny old day. Go bugger it. Do you know what? It's a duvet day. Get the ice cream out. Get the weepy film out. Just enjoy it, right? Enjoy all those sensations, enjoy all those emotions. They're there to be used, not to be ignored or buried. And I think this is, fortunately, just push those emotions down instead of embracing them and to feel them and to allow them to pass. We hang on to them. It'd be really awesome to, to speak to Emmanuel and, and, and see what, he, what he'd like to, to share with everybody. Sure. Um, so so just so everyone knows you know i don't go into some trance i don't start rocking to and fro and everything all that happens is i'll close my eyes and you'll hear a different tone of voice and a different language and and you'll feel emmanuel emmanuel's always here he doesn't go anywhere i don't have to go into a trance or anything like that to channel emmanuel he never leaves me um and he's what i'd call the perfect lodger you know you're not going to sort of walk down into the kitchen and find he's just made a mess in the kitchen. You know, he doesn't come and knock you up at three o'clock in the morning. You know, he's just like, he's there when you need him, right? When you want a bit of company, when you want a bit of guidance, he's there. And that's what's magic about it. So, um, let's check it's a bit in. Like for all of our, everyone's guardian angels and guides. There's Absolutely. There. Yeah. He's, he is my guardian angel. There's no two ways about that. Right. So yeah, absolutely. We have access to this. So here I am, Emmanuel. How delightful it is to be with you today. And may I first 
offer my heartfelt gratitude and thanks to our dear sweet host, Sarah, for hosting us and inviting us along to talk to you. So what do we talk about? Well, let us talk of the most important news that I can be bringer of. And that is to remind you all of the truth of who you are. For you do know that you are angels all. And no, I am not giving you false praise. It is the truth. For within you, within this vehicle in which you come, there is a most brilliant being of light. And yes, of course, there is the human form that you work, wear on its exterior. But as you go within, as you journey through life, as you begin to ask the bigger, greater questions, so you come to realize in your moments of remembrance that maybe, just maybe, you are something more than just human. And so, knowing now that you are an angel, let me address your human self and say this to you. If there is one thing that you do today, tomorrow, for the rest of your life, it is that you take a journey, a journey towards self-love. For all too many of you have fallen out of love with yourselves. And before you embark on the greater journey in which one finds the purpose, your mission upon this planet, the first most important journey is inward, for it is a journey of learning to love yourself again. But Emmanuel, have you seen me in the mornings in the mirror with my wrinkles and my bumps in all the wrong places? Yes, I have. And so have the angels that walk with you. And still, if you were to see with the eyes that I see you with, you would only see perfection. You would only see the beautiful, magnificent angel that shines from within you. And so, yes, it is a daily task to gradually, slowly fall back in love with yourself. And then, then you can begin to truly explore what it is you are here for, for you are all here for a reason. You are all here to help with the transformation of your planet to a heaven on earth. And no, I am not being overly optimistic. I am being factual. For all of you who are listening to this have been drawn to this for a particular reason, and that is that you hear this message. Yes, you did choose to come down onto this planet. Yes, you do have a personal mission. Yes, you are here to help with the transformation of this planet. And yes, you were all born with talent, skills and gifts that are here to help create a heaven on earth. And I am sure that there will be other opportunities for us to talk. But I hope that this brief message has helped you to just click back into your angel self, to unfurl the angel wings that are your birthright 
and give you the reminder so that you might remember that there is more to this life than the human adventure. There is the adventure of the angel also. Know that you are never alone, that all of you have at least one guardian angel which is assigned to you from birth, and that whenever you wish to, they will be there for you. And again, perhaps another time, we will have the opportunity to explore in some greater depth the messages I have given. And so, I wish you well, as do all the angels. And we send you our love. And if I can ever be of service to you, please, that is what I am here for. Please do not hesitate to call upon me. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, Joe, for bringing Emmanuel proof for us. You're welcome. Um, wow. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> so anybody that's watching this that would like to, to contact you and, and find out a bit more, can you share your website for everyone? Sure. Um, it's Joe, J-O, and emmanuel.com that's emmanuel e-m-m-a-n-u-e-l joe and emmanuel.com I'll put, I'll put you in the link as well um, but thank you so much for for sharing with everyone and for emmanuel coming through and, and, and delivering a message for everyone and um it'd be awesome to to see what unfolds next for, for you and emmanuel and, and sharing your gifts with the world so thank you you're welcome and thank you so much for having us.